Persona, 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 persona. Oh, sorry, I'm doing a Hi, I'm Daisy reference. I didn't mean to ruin everything that way. I'm very sorry. Uh, can I even go out? No. So much happened today. You're super sleepy. All right, we're pursuing the true culprit, a.k.a. the true ending. But first... It's a see-through teddy. Sensei? Why are you here? I could ask you the same. This is basically, I don't know. I Usually it seems like Igor called me here and had stuff to tell me, and that's not what happened here. I see. How mysterious. There are so many things I don't know about. But I did realize something. I've been thinking all this time about who I really am. But I couldn't find the answer. I was no one from the start. Humans live in the other world, and shadows live in this world. From the beginning, that's all there was to it. I was just a shadow in that world. I figured something out. That day at the hospital, I realized that I really can't do anything. As soon as I thought that, I lost consciousness. Then when I woke up, I was inside the fog. Shadows can't stay in the human world. They aren't allowed. I walked and walked, but there was nothing all around me. Just when I started thinking that I couldn't go anywhere, I heard the noise of a car. And then I was here. I remember lots of things now. My world is a place shaped by human thoughts. One day, a shadow living in that world awakened to human emotions. But humans and shadows are completely different entities. So he made himself forget that he was a shadow. He wanted to forget. He wanted people to like him. And that's how he came to look like this. <laughs> I really am stupid. What the other Teddy said before, in the end, it was all true. No matter how much I search for myself, I have no self. There was no me to begin with. I'm just a shadow that took a different form so humans would like me. It would have been better if I had never remembered. But I did. I'll probably turn back to a regular shadow soon. Oh, yeah. Sensei, one day, when you meet Nana-chan in heaven, apologize for me. Tell her, I'm sorry I couldn't do anything. Tell her, I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is the point at which you're like, uh, dude, uh, I understand you haven't been around for the news, but uh, she's not dead. Um, she hasn't been dead for a few hours now. If you had just answered your cell phone, you, you would know these things. Also, I don't think Teddy saved her, so we're going to go ahead and choose anything but that choice. Really? Nana Chance. Wow. That's wonderful. I'm so glad. Glad that I could at least hear that. <laughs> My heart feels so much lighter now. I'm starting to feel sleepy. What a strange place. It feels so soothing. It's not like my world. 
Something just feels so nostalgic about this place. Could this be your dream world, Sensei? <laughs> We're back to the same choices earlier. I could ask you the same thing. Is this your dream world, Teddy? This is like, something like that. I don't know is also a valid answer because we really have no idea about this Velvet Room limousine. Uh-huh. But I wonder why I met you here. What am I supposed to do now? I don't know. Let's move on together. Sure, why not? But I don't know what to look for or how to find it. No matter how hard I think, there's too many things my little brain can't understand. But I do understand one thing now. I'm glad that I met you, Sensei. And look what we've managed to find. That last rank of star we were talking about. I love the stupid face on the thing. <laughs> hey. How's it going? I'm a star. What's up? You thought the man in the moon was the only thing? No, son. I'm also here. Hey. I'm watching you sleep. We can make Hell L. The Light Bearer. Um, Evade Elec would be nice if we ever, ever intended to use him. So, sure, Marakunda, you can go bye bye. Why not? But I have to get going. This is your place. It doesn't seem like somewhere that I'd be allowed to stay. Goodbye, Sensei. They were sitting there the whole time. They're just watching it and they're super embarrassed. Hmm. It seems the words in your memory weren't the only things you summoned here. This is a room for guests who have an ego that can be nurtured. Shadows, mere fragments broken off from the ego, have no place here. The water's strength has moved a single stone that had stopped returning it once again into the flow. Mmm, very interesting. Well now, it's about time we departed once again. This vehicle is still on its journey. There is no reason to tarry here for long. Margaret? We're ready to go. Let us depart. <laughs> ah, you are every inch the guest I had anticipated. Gross. Now, it's time for you to return. <laughs> I am even more intrigued now as to where this is all headed. We'll be waiting for your next visit. Wait, what if I don't want a next visit? Ah! Also, Igor, my bro, we have to have a just some kind of discussion or a chat about your eyes. Um, They're extremely... Bugged out, bloodshot, like, man. How did it go? Did you find Teddy? No, and no one's seen him either. Oh, that annoying little furball. Just when we're at a turning point in the case, too. We have no choice. Let's pursue Adachi for now. Whoa! Whoa, look how dense this fog is. It's gotten even worse than before. What the? There's this malicious aura everywhere. It feels completely different from the last time I was here. I think we'd better hurry. Give me a sec to try finding Adachi. Does this mean both this world and ours are getting messed up? Our glasses work on the fog on the other side. 
It can't be normal. And I heard more people are falling ill because of the fog. I wonder what's going to happen. I sense him. Adachi's definitely in here. Are you serious? Which way? Hold on. So he did come to this side. Well, that settles it. There's virtually no doubt remaining that he's the true culprit. Once we capture him, solving the mystery of this world and the rest of the case can't be far behind. Then... maybe we'll find out where Teddy came from, too. Man, where is that bear anyway? Well... I can say for sure he's not here. And I know Adachi is here, but I can't track him down myself. Gee, Ted! Why aren't you here when we need you most? This place... <sighs> I see. I... came back. But it really doesn't matter. I'm completely useless. Nana-chan... I'm so sorry. Teddy? It is you, Teddy. I heard... your voice. You said... Hang in there. I heard my big bro and everyone else, too. <laughs> Nana-chan! Oh, hold on! I'll get the doctor! It seems she's asleep again. Um, Nana-chan told me that she heard my voice. She heard me say, hang in there. It could be that her frankly miraculous recovery was because everyone's voices reached her. Oh, okay. Even unconscious, people are capable of hearing others' voices. My voice. And theirs too. Everyone. In any case, there are too many things we don't understand about her condition and what caused it. We're doing our best, but it's difficult when everything about her illness is a total unknown. Unknown. Well, if anything happens, please send for me. If I'm an unknown being, then the way I can change is unknown too. So all I have to do is make them not unknown. Nana-chan's doing her best. Sensei and the others are probably fighting now too. I... I'm just a shadow. But Nana-chan cheered up when she heard my voice. So what if I'm just a shadow? There must be something I can do. I can't just give up thinking about things. That's why I came back here. Right, Nana-chan? If you were wondering where this was, here it is. Right. I need to get back to the others. Hang in there, Nana-chan. I'll be back soon. It's no use. I can only tell that Adachi is here, not his exact location. Rizu-chan! If only Teddy was with us. Didn't he say his nose is practically useless now? And could he even help us find that bastard? <laughs> nope. He'd be no help at all. But he was always there to support me whenever. That bear's a loud mouth, but he's nice to have around. He's always so full of energy. He's lighthearted and always optimistic. I'm alright. I just got a little dizzy. The fog's so dense, it's hard to see through it. Why don't we call it a day? It won't do us any good if you collapse. I agree. If Rise-san became fatigued, even if we found Adachi, our capacity in battle would be reduced. Moreover, it's almost nighttime. We should return to our world for the present.
damn it! We came so far to run smack into a dead end. I know he's in there too. What's wrong with me? My powers are completely useless. Teddy? You little... Where the hell were you? Uh, I'm sorry. You idiot! Bad bear! Bad! You're so late! Who do you think you are? <laughs> um... Risei-chan? Are you faking? No, stupid! Sorry, I want to help you all again. You know how much trouble you caused, you dumb bear? Where the hell were you? I'm sorry. I figured out a lot of things. Stuff about me and that world. I wanted to tell you all. A shadow? You mean you're one of those things we've been fighting? Kill him. Yup. Just like the ones you all know about. Shadows are suppressed human thoughts given form. Everyone has them inside. Wait. You say you're a shadow, but you didn't attack us. And you kept telling us from the start that you wanted to bring peace and quiet back to that world, right? But in the end, I was just an ordinary shadow. Nothing special about me at all. I did everything I could until now to try and make my world peaceful. But instead, the weird fog started seeping out into this world, too. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. If I really was special, then maybe... It's no big deal. I mean, we weren't expecting much from you in the first Damn. place. Damn. And about you being a shadow? We pretty much figured you were something like that anyway. Huh? Ooh, what are you saying? Here I am pouring my heart out to you and you say you thought I was something like that anyways? No normal person would think such a pretty bear could really be a shadow! So what's the problem with being a shadow? It's true that you may have been born that way, but you now possess the power of persona. A shadow is suppressed power. Once controlled by the ego, it becomes a persona. Doesn't it follow then that you must have developed an ego? Whether the ego masters its shadow or the shadow awakens to its ego. The only difference I see is the order in which the process occurred. Oh, Teddy's practically human then. Uh, I'm the same as humans? You keep trying to figure out who you are, just like all of us here. You can't do much on your own. You really aren't that special. See? What's so different between you and us? <laughs> Thank you! I'm so glad I met you guys! The rest of us were pretty much a group of misfits to begin with, too, right? You fit right in, man. I beg your pardon? Who are you calling a misfit? Isn't that just you, senpai? Hey, that's not something a detective would say. Or an idol, either. Gee, stop crying, will ya? Now's not the time for that. While you were gone, we figured out who murdered the announcer and senpai. It was Adachi. Huh? Adachi? That total goofball? Wow, I didn't notice at all. Looks like I'm pretty blind to that sort of thing. Hmm. But you all know him. If you can't find someone like that, I don't think I can help you. Like I said, we're not expecting much from you. Well, the main thing is, it's hard to get pumped about this without someone nice and fuzzy around. Yeah, what Kanji said. Uh, okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Now that the band's back together, let's take it from the top. Starting tomorrow. 
It's been a while, but I'll do my best to look for him too. Leave it to Fuzzy. We once had a bird named Fuzzy. He was a better character than Teddy. And I'm sorry to all you Teddy fans out there, but uh, he's my least favorite character of the eight here. So, uh, sorry about that. If you came here looking for Teddy adulation, you went to the wrong playthrough. Now nah, I'm not going to sit here and dump on him either. You know, everybody has different preferences and that's fine. I am more of a Yukiko fan than most. Now, partially it's because I think she's the most attractive of the group. <laughs> the fridge still hasn't changed, despite all the revelations. Probably still too tired, right? Yeah. And yeah, Yukiko's laughing can be annoying too. But you know what's more annoying? Bear puns. Bear puns. Although it's toned down a bit in Golden, I think, compared to the original. At least that's my memory of it meshing with this now. I'm not sure. But I feel like it's just not quite there as often. I'll give it a try, but... If Risei-chan couldn't find him... I really doubt someone with a dried-up nose like me will be much help. Hmm. 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 I do smell a dachi baby in here, but the fog is completely covering up his scent. Teddy, you can't do it either? When you look at me with those eyes, I get this feeling... I've got to sniff him out no matter what! This is my time to shine! <laughs> oh, I'm getting something! <laughs> Teddy? Hey, quit wandering around. You better not flake out on us again. Huh? I sense it from this away. Is it Itachi? Um, how do I put it? It's kind of hazy, but at the same time, it feels like I've got a whopper on the line. I don't get it. Very suspicious. This definitely smells, but that's weird. If I remember right, that's where Sensei, Yosuke, and Chie-chan came from when I met them for the first time. When we first... where was that? Oh, you mean that creepy-ass room where all the faces on the posters were cut out? Yep, there's someone there! Teddy, you really are amazing! It was just dumb luck. It's because that's where I first sensed Sensei and the others. That's why it kind of smelled over there. Oh, I see. Wait, did you say it smelled? Wasn't that the room where Yosuke had to go to the bathroom and... Huh? You're saying he peed his pants there? Ew, I don't want to hear it. Oh, you lie so bad. Dude, I did not piss my pants. She had quit spreading random rumors about stuff like that. Uh, well, it happened so long ago, my memory's kind of fuzzy, you know? Okay, guys, enough fuzziness. Follow me, the master of fuzzy logic. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard you crack up in a while, Yukiko. Though I really wonder sometimes about your sense of humor. Now, the one thing, the thing that's nice about Yukiko in this spot, we were just talking about her laughter. You'll notice that she hasn't really had any like the fits where she's just ha 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 for like 20 seconds. Instead, it's just like the snirk. And, and then we know she's gone, but we don't have to listen to it. And to me, that's enough. It implies it without having to hear it, which is the most annoying part, I admit. So we're good. Also, we keep flying through judgment. And now we are very close. I noticed her first, and she just had to run off and have an affair. Who's there? Oh, it's you guys. You're very persistent. 
<laughs> we don't really need an answer to this question anymore, although we haven't exactly had it admitted yet, but uh, just, you're the real killer. Look at this stupid face. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not lying your way out of this one, damn it! Just being here proves it! Answer us! You're the one who threw Ms. Yamano into the TV, aren't you? <laughs> it was an accident. She started struggling. What else was I supposed to do? I called her out to the lobby because I wanted to ask her something. And then she started getting hysterical on me. Flashback. Who are you? And what's this something important you called me out here for? What they say on the news isn't true, is it? All that talk about you having an affair and whatnot, it's all a lie, right? Why do I have to explain myself to you? I see. So you don't deny it. You caught my eye. But it turns out you're another worthless bitch. What's wrong with you? <laughs> don't make me call for help. <sighs> shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I think you need to see what it's like to fear for your life. It'll get your head straight. <laughs> what are you going to do? No! Ah! She, she fell in. <laughs> wow! So people can go completely inside! Does raise a few more questions, but also answers some. Good thing for me no one else was around there in the middle of the night. That happened in our lobby? I learned about the Midnight Channel through some rumor. You hear a lot of fishy stories like that on the Force. But it was pure coincidence that I touched the screen and discovered my power. I burst out laughing when I found out. I knew right away that this was going to be interesting. So you tested it out on Mayumi Yamano? Nah, it was nothing like that. I'm a very sincere fellow. I was just trying to punish the stupid bitch a little for betraying me. Yeah, putting them inside the TV was never the plan. But you know, both Mayumi and that dippy high school girl struggled for no reason. Then you were responsible for Saki-senpai's death! Saki? Oh yeah, her name was Saki Konishi, or something like that. At first I just called her in because of work-related stuff. Her being the one who found Mayumi's body and all. And naturally, if there was any chance she'd seen something, I'd need to know, right? So I was all set to be a nice guy to her. And then that bitch. By the way, not the most flattering of um, assumptions here. What's this about anyways? Didn't you call me in for more questions? Well, we'll get to that. But you know, I saw you this afternoon. You were getting pretty cozy with that Namatame. Huh. So I'm not good enough for you. Well, I know how to deal with girls like you. No! It does seem... God, these high school girls today. This world's gone straight to shit. When I was in school, I wasn't allowed to do anything but study my ass off. I was supposed to be the best of the best, and instead they stick me in the boonies. But I guess I got this sweet power to make up for it. <laughs> Life's not so bad after all. Get on your knees and beg, and maybe I'll let you out. <laughs> yeah, like that'll happen. <laughs> As if I'd walk into a death trap like that. Seems like he might be uh, trying to force himself on these girls. It was a lot easier the second time. High school girls are thinner, you know? Lighter. You son of a bitch! Come on, give me a break. I didn't know it was dangerous inside the TV. It's not like I was trying to kill them. I mean, I'm sure they hit on Namatame, not the other way around. A council secretary will one day rise to public office himself. Mayumi and that high schooler were just gold digging. They got exactly what they deserved. I didn't do anything wrong at all. 
Shut the hell up! You knew from what happened to Mayumi Yamano that people die in here! <sighs> so what if I knew? <laughs> so it does seem like the first question is more pertinent. Uh, if we follow the trail of evidence that we have so far, we know that Namatame was the one who pushed in the next victim, which was Yukiko. So it doesn't seem like Adachi's responsible for anything else, at least not directly. Nah, he called the police in the middle of the night, just after they found that Saki girl's body. The rest of the force had their hands full with the double homicide, and it happened that I was the one who took the call. Namatame said the police refused to take him seriously. You were responsible for that then. Oh, quite the contrary. If anyone else had taken the call, sure. But I actually did believe him, you know? Huh, that's the pattern to the two deaths so far? And now you're seeing a girl in a kimono on that weird program, and you think she'll die too, is that right? Namatame-san, do you seriously expect us to believe something like that? But... But it's true! If there's any way the police can protect her... Listen, there's no way the police are going to make a move based on a fantasy story like that. <laughs> it does sound interesting, though. B but Oh, I have an idea. If you really want to save her that much, why not do it yourself? Like, you could shelter her somewhere. Some place where no one could find her. Where no one could find her? Save her yourself. You can do it. I'm busy, so I'm hanging up now. Bye. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Of all the people who could have received Namatami's call, it ended up being me. Talk about luck! All I did was give him a little push. And he completely bought into his vision of this world. The more people you guys saved, the more he'd kidnap. Both sides had the best of intentions, so the game of cat and mouse would never end. <laughs> it was awesome. You gotta be shitting me! Why? What reasons could you have for doing that? <laughs> reasons? None, really. I could do it, that's all. And it was fun. I guess that's my reason? You murdered people just for the fun of it?! Come on. All I did was put people in here. I didn't murder them. And Namatame did most of it. I had nothing to do with any of you. You're just dodging the blame! Yeah? Then how would you prove it? He put people inside TVs? <laughs> you think the police are that stupid? What a jerkwad! I do admit, though, I never thought you guys would manage to track me down. I like that. Games like this gotta have surprises or they get boring fast. It's like when I dealt with that Kubo kid. That was fun, too. Then, you mean to say that Mitsuo Kubo's disappearance was your doing as well? I did sense something odd in his course of action. If he had special powers and wanted attention, why resort to a regular copycat crime? But that wasn't the case. Kubo had no such powers. In fact, he was thrown in by you. Am I correct? It had been a while since I last put someone inside the TV, so I really got a kick out of that one. Why did you do that? And how come Mitsuo didn't say anything about you? <laughs> you think that didn't occur to me before I did it? Come on, I'm a detective. I led him through to a room at the station with the TV, switched off the lights, and did it quick while he was still startled. As long as he didn't see me push him in, and no one else did either, no one would believe him, even if he survived. Of course, I don't think the Kubo kid ever figured out what happened. <laughs> Wait, the police station? Yeah. He turned himself in pretty quick, actually. This was back when we didn't even know enough to issue a search warrant. But the other officers decided it was just a prank, so they pawned him off on me. I didn't blame them. I mean, a kid coming and saying, I did it all! It was me! Who'd believe him? But it looked bad. I didn't think anyone would come forward and take the blame for all the incidents. The police were desperate dependent on anyone. If this kid really did it, they might have announced the case was closed. And if that happened, 
Namatama would stop saving people. I couldn't let that happen, or the game would be over. That's why I told the others I sent him home. I came up with the idea to put him inside the TV on the spot. The game would be over? You threw him in just so your fun wouldn't end? You gotta have some excitement in life, don't you agree? But then you guys put your foot in it yet again and ruined my fun. Thanks to you, Kubo was arrested again, and everyone acted like he was the true culprit behind it all. <sighs> Couldn't they see how badly he copied the crime scene? It worked out in the end, though, because good old Namatame kept saving people. I guess the guy started to develop some kind of messiah complex, huh? <laughs> what an idiot. This is all a game to you. How dare you murder people? Murder Saki-senpai for such a stupid reason! You bastard! I'll never forgive you! You can keep your forgiveness. Our world will probably become just like this place soon enough anyways. Didn't you notice? The fog's leaking out. Everything on that side's pretty much screwed. The two worlds will merge soon, and then there'll be no difference. No sides anymore. What the hell's he talking about? This isn't his real body. The real Adachi is somewhere else. But this guy feels different from an ordinary shadow. It doesn't seem like he's going berserk. <laughs> wow, you can tell that much? This me is just around to greet you guys, and thank you for wasting your time by chasing me in here. I'd say this world has taken a real shine to me. I feel like it's giving me everything I've ever wanted. And the monsters don't attack me at all. Maybe they can tell we have the same goal. The Shadow's goal? By the end of the year, Inaba will disappear completely into the fog. Soon, this place will be reality. I'll be in this world, so if you want me, come and get me. This world has a mind of its own. We'll see which of us it favors. Keep your bullshit to yourself. It's about time you shut the hell up. We'll finish this right now! What a chump! Didn't I just tell you the real me is somewhere else? I'll be expecting you all. We'll put an end to this. Get back here, you! That stuff about the world's mind and how this place will become our reality. Was he serious? The rest of his confessions were consistent. We'd best proceed under the assumption that it's no lie. It felt like he's gained some strong power after coming here. Not only that, maybe he got taken over by that power. So what he said about the two worlds becoming one, that's really gonna happen? Didn't he say that it would happen by the end of this year? What happens then? I think he means this world will engulf the human world. The people in town are acting weird. It's like when the shadows that emerged from people went berserk. If the fog gets even thicker, and this town is completely shut off from the outside world, then the other side might become full of shadows, like over here. You mean everyone's gonna turn into shadows? Damn it! Damn that bastard! Why? We went through so much to get here! And now it turns out he was pulling our strings this whole time? <laughs> well, we have two interesting choices. Um, it doesn't really matter, so we're just going to be like, let's end this. I, you know, I like both, though. No more. That's enough, Adachi. Yeah. It's about time we finished this. I don't want to feel this way ever again. There's a path we can take now. I sense Adachi's presence from that direction. He's taunting us. Bring it on! Let's go kick his ass right now! Wait. I suggest we prepare ourselves first. We can't let him stab us in the back ever again. We must face him with all the power at our disposal and defeat him without fail. I'm a little worried what he means by the end of the year, but now's not the time to freak out. Let's get prepared. 
Let's get over prepared and leave <laughs> footprints all over his stupid smug. Damn. And once again, we gotta rank up. Um. Rank eight already. It's pretty quick. So, there you have it. A lot of confessions. Still a few things we don't know. Like, he was clearly aware that he could at least touch the TV, go through the TV, sort of. He talked about, oh, you can put somebody all the way in. He didn't know that. So, when did he discover that? Why do these people have these powers? What's happening? A lot of questions we don't have answered right now. Now, with all that story behind us, we're going to actually call it quits on this part here. And it's a tiny bit early. Ends up being a relatively good break. In the next part, we're going to unlock the quote-unquote final dungeon. There are rabbit quotes there because it's not entirely true, but it's fine. And there's still a few other lingering threads to, uh, to figure out. Now, this is an interesting part of the game because uh, we have till Christmas Eve, if I remember correctly, or maybe the 23rd, somewhere in that range, to finish this dungeon. Fits with about the two-week timeline we've had for most uh, the difference here is, though, if we beat it early, we just fast forward. So we're going to spend a few of these days just making sure we're ready, that all the social links that we want are maxed, all that jazz. Uh, I believe that's the case, but we're going to double check. And then we're just going to go ahead and fast forward a bit. So even though it seems like we have a lot of time left, we actually have a little bit less than you might think. Anyway, in tomorrow's video, we will start the search for Adachi. Thank you for watching.